நீங்கள் பார்த்து கொண்டிருப்பது அமெரிக்கா ஃபர்ஸ்ட் தமிழ் சேனல் फ्रॉम அமெரிக்கா எஸ் மை டியர் फ्रेंड्स டுடே वी आर एंटरिंग इनटू द टॉपिक कॉल्ड 50th புலிகேசி इन தமிழ் தே से 50வது புலிகேசி did anyone have a curiosity of what it would be did anyone had a curiosity can anyone say yes yes or yes you had a curiosity right did uh, anyone saw the prerequisite which was there on the poster and uh, on the uh, message was, yeah, in the poster it was mentioned just to uh, at least get an idea about the movie 23 yeah. uh 23rd publication yeah correct correct that's good that's good i think the chairman really observed it well so in the poster in you sorry i also watched a few few clippings in youtube not full movie but few ah uh-huh. wonderful wonderful thank you for doing it so by that you would have observed one thing so 23rd pulikesi is a movie which was uh, enacted by one of the famous comedians of tamil nadu vaigai puyal vadivelu so in that why i asked you to watch is uh, he would have enacted in such a way the entire script is like uh, how a leader should not be in a very funny way that was the entire plot of the film and uh, today a topic why we saw that film we will discuss it later why i asked to watch you that film we'll discuss it later before that uh, in august 2021 i had an opportunity to go to delhi and uh, delhi for a leadership conference this leadership conference was so unique uh, that it had delegates from across india 100 delegates were 125 delegates were part of the conference and you take india map and you put your finger anywhere and i could easily tell few delegates from that list like that across north west south andhra pradesh kerala karnataka tamil nadu shillong kashmir punjab jharkhand rajasthan across across india we had participants kolkata everywhere so this leadership conference uh, in the conference the major discussion was related to the future leadership especially a uh, leadership for the generation called gen c have you ever heard about the word gen c or generation z can anyone say generation z can anyone say yes okay generation c is a generation which is born from 1997 to 2012 this generation is called gen c okay this entire leadership conference was how to handle this gen c because by the year 2030 to 2050 this generation would be the predominant workforce of the entire world so you could see right from 1997 to 2012 they are born so by 2050 they would be the predominant generation out there working so this entire conference was related to that how to lead uh, into 2050 so since this uh, topic is completely related about the crux of the conference since it is related to 2050 uh, we wanted to keep the title as 50th pulikesi and the movie 23rd pulikesi said how not to be a leader and this 50th pulikesi would say how you can be a better leader uh, from now on we're still 2050 that is the reason why we kept the name title as 50th pulikesi and that is the reason why we asked you to watch 23rd pulikesi hope so you the topic and the current topic is clear yes moving on to the uh, session uh, have anyone visited coimbatore if you have visited coimbatore can you send letter c in the chat box if you had visited coimbatore the city called coimbatore yeah i could see some responses people are sending it to me yes dilip has sent it c auditor mahod mohan sir has sent it c yes uh, sharnata has sent it c yeah yeah i could i could see some personal messages as well coming up good good there are lot of cc yeah good yeah so people would have visited have visited coimbatore if you had visited coimbatore have you gone to this restaurant annapurna if you have visited annapurna send the letter a in the chat box if you had been to annapurna no oh, dilip has not been to annapurna that's fine dilip okay auditor mahon said okay okay no fine that's fine yeah few people have gone and few people have not gone okay so this annapurna hotel is a chain of veg restaurants across pamero uh, they are here for almost 50 years and they are claimed to be the pride of pamero okay uh, the uniqueness of this restaurant is uh, my father uh, had sambar and coffee 30 years back in annapurna 
and it tasted the same 10 years back when I tasted that. And it tastes still the same. The sambar and coffee and every other food item tastes the same 50 years exactly. I'm not telling it of our something which I read it in the newspaper. Personally, I have experimented. My father has experimented. Even my grandfather also have tasted that. So for generations, we have observed that Annapurna provides the same taste for 50 years. So before entering the session, I had an opportunity to speak with uh, the marketing head of uh, Annapurna Masalas. They have a separate distribution for masala as well. So Annapurna Masala, his name is Mr. Manivan. He was a friend of mine. He's a fellow JCI member as well. So when I spoke to him, uh, he said that uh, the important thing which uh, uh, Annapuna holds uh, as well as today our chairman has said is consistency in taste. That is the only thing they honor very much. Uh, they believe that consistency in taste, giving it for one minute. Yeah. That is their key note. Okay. We will keep this Annapurna example a little bit aside and we will come back to that later. But what is the point we are going to discuss is be future ready. The one of the key points which was discussed in the seminar was be future ready. What is mean being future ready is see, I work for an event management, I have an event management company, I do events. Uh, getting updated in my field is a part of my day to day job. But being future ready is like looking out for 360 degree view, which means like looking into all professions and checking out what is happening in each and every profession. That is called a 360 degree view. For example, I should know what is happening in a uh, engineering field. I should know what is happening in a uh, civil engineering field. I should be able to know what is happening in a casting field, uh, medical field. So I should get in touch with uh, latest news and trends and find out what is happening in each and every field. So why this is really important is if in our day-to-day -day problem, if some something gets uh, a solution from that latest trends, it would really clear our problems. So this is really important. This is what being future ready. So why we discussed about Annapurna, we will see here. Okay, Annapurna being very consistent in taste, they found one problem in their company. The problem is like when the third generation entered. So basically Annapurna has the centralized kitchen concept and they have 20 restaurants across Coimbatore, And they wanted to optimize the capacity of their cooking, which means like, for example, if there's one a jalebi counter, one jalebi, uh, uh, jalebi uh, tawa where they are cooking. Uh, if the person is making 20 jalebis, they wanted to optimize it so that it is uh, 80 jalebis can be made in the same uh, time with the same person. So in order to optimize so what they did is they, are, uh, they were future ready. So when the third generation was entering, they found this one problem where everything was uh, done through firewood. The entire cooking system was fired in firewood and the heat was uh, getting imbibed with the cooking person and they couldn't work properly. So what they did is, uh, I will show you an image. They went to the casting plant and they came up with the latest technology of creating one gas stove and with the latest uh, innovative uh, metals around there in the market. And if you see the second image where the person who's making jalebi, he's sitting close to the stuff, which ideally won't happen in any of the cooking environments. So he's literally sitting close and it is said that the latest technology what Annapurna has developed is, you can even keep your hand on it. Whatever temperature the frying oil pan is on, you could keep the hand on it, but still it won't affect you. So such kind of latest technologies, they are keeping in touch only by getting it you know what is happening in that field. And the second uh, surprising fact, what Annapuna is doing is, uh, they are predicting the 2050 uh, <clears throat> uh, traffic in Coimbatore. They say that currently, um, if, I, if they want to uh, deliver their lunch, uh, the, from the centralized kitchen, they have to start by 11 a.m. so that it reaches every other restaurant by 12 p.m. And they could serve. But they say that by 20 to 30 years, this traffic in Coimbatore would, uh, would increase rapidly that they might require to start early morning, like at 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. itself, they have to start sending their lunch so that only it reaches the time uh, by 9 a.m. or 12 a.m. As, as it is going now. But the problem is they are very much keenly consistent in 
focused on the consistency and taste. So for that, what they're future looking, they're looking into the future and they're trying to develop new metal based containers. Even though if you cook the food and keep it at 9 a.m., it stays fresh until 12 p.m. or 1 p.m. when it gets delivered to the respective restaurants. So my dear friends, what I'm trying to say is, uh, you may be a working profession, you may be a businessman, try to find uh, new, new uh, trends in every field. For Annapurna, this casting is not in their field at all. It's completely out of their scope. But they came to know what is happening there and they were, ab they were able to solve their existing problem of this open firewood system and they are able to manufacture good quality products. So when you are future ready and you, when you are completely aware of what is happening around you, the 360 degree, you could find solutions for your current problem as well as for your future problem. This is really important, my dear friend. So being future ready is one of the key points discussed in the conference. And uh, when you are future ready, your business will have a steady flow. And uh, being having a steady flow uh, would really encourage the Gen Z generation. And uh, when you are always keen on latest technologies, this Gen Z generation will get new, new topics because you're, you will be experimenting, right? You will take one topic from one field and trying it out in your uh, own business, whether this creates a solution. So like that, you would take one, one topic and you will be trying to implement a new solution. So the Gen Z generation who's going to be working in your working platform will get to have to work in each and every technology so that when they have this uh, latest technologies now and then, that excites them a lot. So always try to be future ready. So this is a one good way of handling this gen generation. Moving on to the next topic. Before moving on to the next topic, I want you all to take a paper and a pencil. Yeah, I, I hope so. I, 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 I'm sure that all are with me. Uh, can you play, please say letter R if you are with me in the chat box. Can you please send letter R in the chat box if you're with me? Yes, I could see a message from Harisa. I could see a message from Auditor Mohan, sir. Yeah, yeah, I could see it from many people coming it up. Yeah, can you send letter R if you're with me in the chat box? My dear friends? Yes, yes, I could see a lot of messages coming up. Yeah, good, good. So now a small activity. I would request you to take a piece of paper and pencil and start <clears throat> writing your goal for the fifth year from five years now on what would be your goal can you write it down i'll give you a minute yeah please follow this activity because it has to do with the content which is about to follow so take a piece of paper and a pen and write your fifth year goal from now onwards or you can if you are not able to write or you are not in a position where you could write you can think of the problem or you think about your future goal which is going to happen in five years from now onwards yeah if you're done i think can anyone come up on mic and say uh, what is your goal after five years can auditor sir can say mohan sir yes mohan, sir. sir yes sir uh, what would be your goal for five years from now one of the leading ca in madurai okay you want to you are a currently you are a ca and you want to become the leading ca's in madurai correct yes sir yeah, yeah, that's that's wonderful. Um, I think uh, Sharman is there. Yeah, Dilip sir. Dilip sir, I would be calling out names. Yeah, sure. Dilip sir, I think Dilip sir is not able to answer. It's fine. Okay. So, my dear friends, the next topic is very much important, which is expanding your knowledge territory. So before Going into that, I would like to introduce a person called uh, Wilson. Okay, Wilson is uh, my dear friend who, who is doing a uh, sweet business in Pamato. So we will see about him later. So what is expanding your knowledge territories? You have set goals in your career, but expanding your knowledge territory is setting goals which you can't do. How is that possible, right? Setting goals which I can't do, how can I keep it as a goal? Let's take Wilson as an example. Okay. As I said, Wilson is a sweet manufacturer, savories manufacturer. So, how he can set goals which he can't do? 
So if you ask Wilson, he would say that now I'm having one branch in Coimbatore. My goal after five years would be uh, developing three or four branches in Coimbatore and expanding my business. But the key to the future leadership that is expanding your territory knowledge is Wilson should set a goal in such a way that he will have the sweet boxes no, where he will pack the sweets. So he should set a goal in order to start a manufacturing unit or a production unit or a retail unit for that box. From there, he should set another goal where he can start the manufacturing or retailing for the raw material for the box. Here we saw two things. He's a sweet manufacturer. We are asking him to set a goal which he can't do. That is manufacturing or retailing sweet boxes. From there, he will go into a goal, new goal that he uh, sets a goal to start manufacturing the raw material. And after setting, first he will set the goal and he will work on to it and he'll achieve the product. Second to the third goal. So that is how he sets new, new goals and he starts performing that. When he starts making products in three different goals, he will have three different verticals of business. Not only in business, even in profession. For example, if you are an IT engineer in a company, if you are in a technical side, you have to set your new goal as if you are as, as in such that you have to enter the management side. For example, management side to become the manager, to become the technical manager, to become the delivery head. That would be your new goal. And you should start working on that. So you will have technical experience as well as a new vertical of becoming a manager. So this would expand your knowledge territory and you will not grow big. You will grow huge. That is what this expanding your knowledge is. While expanding your knowledge, simple thing has to be followed is excuses should not be said for these simple reasons, which is I don't have source. I don't have a knowledge. I don't have experience in that. So you should not say excuses for these simple reasons. So you should set a goal which you can't do and you should start performing that goal. You should start practicing the work to achieve that goal. And while practicing the work, you should not say excuses for these simple reasons, which is no source, no knowledge, no experience. My dear friends, let me tell you two examples which happened. One is a business example and one is a working professional example. I had a dear friend of mine called Praveen. Okay. Uh, this person is from a place called Goodaloo. It is uh, almost a one and a half hour drive from Uti. Uh, yeah, one and a half to two hour drive from Uti. So this person started his career as a, a factory worker in a tea plant estate. So he used to pluck plant tea leaves like that. He had a basic education. Uh, he finished his course, school, college school, but he didn't continue further. So he started a factory worker. Then he became the <clears throat> supervisor of the factory. Then later, by chance, he had to come to Coimbatore. In Coimbatore, he first time he saw the computer, how it works. So and he was really attracted by the work of the people where they will have headsets and having call center. This is the era where I'm telling it is around 2000 to 2003. So he was really attracted by the work of call center. So he wanted to know how to join. So he expanded his knowledge by completing his college degree. He joined the call center job. So initially he was a call center person. Then he went on to grow to a position of becoming the manager of the call center. Then what happened because of some not having some good terms, he had to leave the job and he had to start another job. While he was looking for another job, he got an opportunity to become a trainer for a company. So from the day one, he had no experience of a trainer, but since he was in this communication ladder uh, as in a, a telecom uh, a speaker, so he got the opportunity to become a trainer. So he became a trainer for a company uh, for the business setup for the ground level employees. That was his first job as a trainer. Then he became the training head of that company. So see his journey, somewhere he's in a factory worker, now he's training head of a company. From that, he had an opportunity to join an MLM company. And uh, the time when he joined that MLM company uh, in Tamil Nadu, they were doing a business of 15 lakhs. So he started his career as an MLM company. Then he expanded his knowledge in that MLM marketing side. Then he combined both MLM marketing and the training and he implied his training skills. The training skills got improved and he became the training head of Coimbatore. He went on to become the training head of Tamil Nadu 
and he went on to become the training head of south india and next month is going to be the training head of that mlm company of the entire nation and that mlm company currently is the number one mlm company in india uh, tupperware mlm company tupperware you, would, you all would have heard about the word tupperware tupperware itself is the fifth rank but this company called vestige is the number one mlm company and he's going to be the national head of training see his career my dear friends he started as a factory worker in a tea plant now he is a national head of a training company this only happened because he expanded his knowledge level from factory worker he went on to become a telecom speaker from there he entered into a training field then he became he constantly improved so then he came to jci and he became my successor president after me he joined jci pantamath college he became the president of jci pantamath college seeing his leadership ladder through jci he got an opportunity to become a technical management leadership consultant for big big companies which which produces uh, which makes turnover for 4 to 5 crores per month so he would go sit with the ceo and he would be guiding what should be done in their management structure imagine his fellow friends who are uh, factory workers they who didn't develop their knowledge would be becoming a maximum supervisor level up to that only now he is sitting with all top ceos monthly once the ceos are waiting for his appointment and this was only possible because he increased his knowledge territory that is what i want you to do improve your knowledge territory even in a businessman i would like to give another example i had a opportunity to meet my friend called vas he is a jca member from gurgaon so this member was very interesting so initial days of his career he was doing this shawl trading business in north india you know shawls are very much popular in north india right so he was doing this shawl trading business in north india. then what happened in the day uh, he entered a, a real estate business a real estate uh, uh, trading business he entered then one fine day after joining they say he got an opportunity to enter the sports turf manufacturer you would have heard this spice football where the grass turf will be there in cricket grounds and all that, the grass turf he went on to the grass turf uh, retail industry initially he was part of a grass turf retail industry at the same time he was doing the shawl business as well see the vertical he is in the shawl business he is into real estate business now he is a retailer as a for the grass turf then because he didn't have good terms with the grass turf manufacturing company he skipped it and he started his own grass turf manufacturing company and right now they are the leading grass turf manufacturing company in the entire world they are called the gallant sports so my dear friends here you have to observe one thing that he started as a shawl uh, retailer since he developed his knowledge consistently right now he is a leading grass turf manufacturer in india so expanding your knowledge territory is really important so this will help you okay why how it would help me to handle a gen z generation simple in the present world in mncs a common big problem is people the attrition rate which means people resigning the company is on a huge number 30% 40% simple reason because they are, uh, the employees are not finding their current work to be more enterprise they are not finding it exciting wherein if you are having different verticals in your business what will happen is if they are not interested in one part of the business say the person is not interested in shawl industry you can pick the gen c employee and you could put him in the real estate after a particular time if the person is not interested in the real estate employee you could pick him and put him in the sports stuff manufacturing so that you would you would not lose the, that employee wherein if you are into only one business as a shawl business few days he will be working there then after if he is getting bored he will leave the company then you will be finding it hard to bring in a new employee and training him it would be a difficult business which every businessman faces as well as uh, <clears throat> praveen's example of becoming the national head he is my dear friend that is a perfect example as how to be a uh, how to increase your knowledge territory in a working field so for both business professionals as well as for uh, working professionals so for both businessmen and working professional expanding your knowledge territory is really important and third thing is a uh, problem solving so i had an uh, uh, incident with i had a talk with one of the management consultants in west bengal 
so we when we went to the, the the leadership conference that is where i had an opportunity to meet him so that he was explaining me about a problem which happened in one of the popular schools in west bengal so this school was very popular but uh, of late uh, in the last three years uh, they uh, when they approached the management consultant they had a big problem that uh, the students were dropping out of the school and they were changing different different schools this used to be a big school in the town but uh, they started dropping and uh, the management didn't find couldn't find the reason so what happened they approached this management company consultant company and asked them to help them out why what is the problem and how to increase the number of students so this management team went inside and went spoke for two weeks three weeks almost four weeks they spoke and uh, then they came to find the real problem they spoke to each faculty each student each parent like each faculty and many students and the, to the parents of the students uh, people who are outside the school everywhere everywhere when they spoke and they came to know about the core problem what happened that like is uh, the core problem was there was a lot of groupism inside the school especially caste based groupism happened amongst the faculty and there were three to four groups and one group which was a predominant caste in the area uh, was the biggest group in the school and the worst part was the principal of the school was heading the group since this groupism was there you could imagine uh, even in our places when you are a part of a big company uh, this is this used to be a, a common scenario groupism happens right so because of this groupism what happened uh, there were regular fights between these groups and uh, because of this regular fights they were not able to give proper correct quality education to the students so because of that only the students were dropping out my dear friends here you should observe one point i said the principal was part of one of the group business right so he has to be in a position where he has to be a peacemaker he should not be a part of a group business so when you're handling the future generation you have to keep one thing in mind is that uh, you should not create fights you should be a part of the place called the peacemaker where if two groups comes and tells their problem you should find the peace between them you should not be a part of the peacemaker you should not be part of the problem this is a very common point everyone would know right as a leader i should solve problems but in real time scenarios this is not happening in college in business groupisms are there so especially in the gen z generation when they come and when they see this uh, groupism happening in the company they are not for it they will definitely move to a next company so be a peacemaker and accept all waters my 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 mentor used to say surya uh, ocean became ocean when it accepted all waters it accepted river it accepted salt water from sea it accepted ditch it accepted human waste it accepted everything because of that only it became the ocean so when you are a leader of a company people from different backgrounds would be there different walks of life would be there you should treat everyone equally irrespective of their caste creed that should not be a statement that should be a real time practice and my dear friends these gen z generation people are not for caste are not for groupism if you are not accepting and treating them equally this is going to be a tough time trust me that is going to be a tough time for the leader who is in the position so problem solving has to be there and uh, last but not least uh, uh you can lose battles but you can win wars when you are doing a problem solving what do you mean by losing battles but winning wars i'll tell you one ideal situation uh which happened in my company when i was working in bosch and this happened one of my friend had an appraisal discussion uh, with his manager when this discussion was happening the manager purposely wanted to give him low points because uh, there's no need for to give more high but uh, what happened uh, my friend who was on the other side who was uh, the employee uh, he gave a prop the what the manager did was really wrong so intentionally what he was about to do was wrong so there the employee what he did is um, so when the manager was quoting many negative points uh, the person said that see uh, manager if you are here only to evaluate my negative points then i have nothing to say like that he said in an mnc environment these kind of words are not highly appreciated because uh, everything is treated as positive only there uh, when this word came from an employer the manager couldn't digest it because it really hit his ego 
and he explained 20 minutes that i am not like that but still uh, the ego clash which happened inside the manager was a very much a big so what was the end result is for the employer giving it back to the manager right on his face what's the only satisfaction he got but the negative impact what he was he is getting is till now he is not getting a proper recognition because he touched the manager's ego at that point what he could have done is yes the, the manager intention was wrong but if he could have stayed silent or if he would have approached politely at that time he would have lost the battle but that's not a problem but later in the upcoming years he could have got chances where he could have proved and he could have won the war and right now he could have been in a very good position but there he wanted to win the battle and he lost the war so my dear friends you can lose battles but our aim should be to win the war so when you are solving a problem there might be chances that you have to give it up before uh, before your employee or younger employee so don't feel hesitant or don't feel underprivileged while giving it up you can lose the battle but at the end of the time you should win the war my dear friends we saw three points first is future ready when you are future ready your business will have a proper flow and you will have various points where these chances can come and work that is a profit for your own business it will continuously grow as well as these people get to have lot of new new technologies to work on which will really help them second point i think is many people are coming now yeah you could see a lot of new admins have happened uh, uh, haryan uh, mohan sir i think uh, i'm not able to admit few people i will do it sir you yeah, don't worry yeah second point what we saw was increasing your knowledge territory so increasing your knowledge territory means when you try to explore new new verticals when you start exploring new new verticals you grow huge not big that's a plus point for you and when you have a big environment if an employee enters it will be hard for him to leave we we won't lose the employee if he is getting bored of one field we can pull him to the next field next field next field and we can make sure that he is sustained and us for a long period that is a very good employee sustainable program and third point what we saw was problem solving in problem solving you should accept all waters accept everyone irrespective of their caste and you got to be the peacemaker these are the important points which i have my dear friends for the session and uh, thank you for thank you all for a wonderful opportunity uh, over to the chairman